Hello, everyone. We are now moving on to week number four. So we're just about to finish the, verf, the first one third of the course. Time really flies, but we still got many exciting items to cover in the course. So just stay in tune. Don't try to uh, don't try to be left behind. You really want to do some steady study every day, uh, either for your lab or for your lectures or for the tutorial. So try not to really do everything shortly before the deadline. That might work, but it's not really uh, the most beneficial way to uh, for your long time learning. So for this week, we'll continue with uh, our discussion about exceptions. Especially, I want to add in the components of unit testing, especially how to use JUnits for automated unit testing. And I'll conclude the module by mentioning about the idea of uh, regression testing and test-driven de developments. That's really something I would like you to pick up and try to practice in this course and then try to carry that forward to all the future courses uh, in your degree or even your workplace. It's a very practical uh, principle and scale that I really want you to learn. Okay, so for this week, we're going to talk about uh, test-driven developments and also continue our discussion about exceptions, especially there will be some tricky logic about design for test cases, which I really want you to learn about. Okay, and then up to this point, you have already finished the two parts about a review tutorial series, and I really hope you have already uh, recall and pick up all the stuff that you're supposed to uh, learn in the first year. If you got any trouble, any struggle, don't really leave to yourself. You have to reach out to me. Otherwise, there's no way I can help you. Try not to only get to me when you, uh, when it's too late, when you already got poor, uh, poor performance on the course components. That's my uh, humble advice to you. All right, so let's now go over the uh, stuff for this week. Let me now, first of all, point to you, we got a playlist for all the lectures. As usual, click on the YouTube link and they can start with the current intro video. And then start from there. And we got 14 videos in total. Each one of them is about between 15 to 20 minutes. It's about that range. So you really want to study about uh, two to three clips uh, every day. Try not to study all of them, maybe even uh, just before your written test or before you actually need, really need to use it. You, you really need time to digest the stuff. So this week, uh, contents is not that difficult, but I think that it does have some tricky bits that you really want to grasp uh, slowly. And we got the iPad notes. If you click on that, so these are all the uh, annotated version of my visual notes. And I really hope that will help your learning. And then uh, we got the slides. We got uh, standalone slides for lecture 2B, test driven developments with JUnits. Okay. And then we got over here the a separate Google documents for you to print, uh, for you to post questions. Okay. So that's uh, click on the link. And then you, uh, you're advised to maybe post questions, if any, along your study. And we got one diagram for the test-driven developments workflow or flowchart that I explained at the end of the uh, series. That's something for your reference. Always uh, remind yourself about this workflow of writing test cases and running test cases as soon as your code is ready, right? Not really when your code is completely completed, but when it's ready, okay? And then uh, we got some source code over here for you to play with. I got console testers, I got JUnit test cases, and also I got some bounded counter as well. So I got all the source code for you uh, this week. So all you all you really have to do as an exercise is to really play with the work, uh, the execution flow of all the cl uh, of all the examples there, either for correct implementation or for incorrect implementation. I demonstrated for every single case in the lecture uh, this week because I think they're important and they might be covered later in your written test and exam. But for your best practice, you really want to uh, reproduce the uh, kind of illustration I did in the video. All right. Again, if you got any trouble, you definitely have to reach out to me earlier rather than later. Okay, so let me now go over maybe a few more points and then I'll mention about a milestone and then I should leave you for your work, okay? Okay, so uh, these about the videos I just mentioned, you got 14 of them, right? You want to study between two to three uh, video clips every day. And I didn't really exceed the time. It's about three hours, roughly, about three hours, more uh, roughly plus minus 15 minutes or so. Okay, we got the uh, notes, uh, visual notes. We got the slides, and also we got Google Doc uh, for toasting questions. We got diagram, and also we got source code, right? So everything is here. And then let's talk about the learning objectives very quickly. We are going to revisit. Uh, we are going to, let me see, let me choose this color here. 
So we're going to revisit the catch or specify requirements which we spoke about last week in uh, le uh, in lecture two a. So you just have to recall uh, what they really uh, meant uh, is meant to uh, meant to do, and then you have to uh, put it into practice. And this time I'm also showing you how you can. Uh, satisfy the uh, catch or specify requirements in the context of unit testing using J units that, uh, just to reinforce your understanding. And we talk about the bounded counter problem, which is a very simple problem, but I think we can illustrate many uh, ideas actually using this simple example, okay? Especially how you can derive uh, test cases using a so-called finite state machine with uh, state transitions. That's something you will see details uh, in one of the videos. And also we're gonna learn about the design logic of test cases. I'll start by uh, showing you uh, examples using console tester. Namely, the testers are basically console application classes and then we'll simply print out error messages or success messages to the console. However, we're going to learn that it's actually manual, tedious, and error prone. So that's why we had to move on to uh, using JUnit's assertions. But the design logic for the test cases is completely identical. But it's good to go over some not so ideal solution first and then talk about their limitation and we'll move on to the ideal solution. That should be the, uh, the way to actually learn things. So you will really appreciate the, uh, the ultimate solution rather than just learning about it in the first place, in which case you can easily forget, okay? All right, so we, we'll talk about, as I said, we'll talk about uh, console versus JUnit tests, right? So these two. And then finally, we're gonna conclude this uh, module by talking about test-driven developments by lifting ourselves about 35,000 feet off the ground, uh, above the ground. And then we're gonna see exactly how we can apply the uh, practice. You will see the diagram uh, also on the lecture side for your reference, especially about regression testing. I guess for most of you may have heard about the term regression, maybe in the context of reading a book and your school teacher, school teacher might tell you that, uh, regression in the case of reading is a bad idea. However, in software developments, regression is the opposite. It's a very, very highly recommended idea for you to adopt, but you will see why. I'll explain the story there in the video, okay? So what about the milestone uh, for week number four? So you will have to submit your lab number one. The normal deadline will be Friday, 2 p.m. EST. The deadlines are strict, no extension. So please make sure you allow yourself time to actually submit your lab one. And for this week, notice that we also got our written test one whose submission is also closed at the same time, like a 2 p.m. Uh, EST on Friday. So you want to make sure uh, if you really want to do uh, both of them, you know, around the same time, it's your choice, but it will be your responsibility to make sure you actually uh, submit both of, both of them uh, in time. If you miss, you miss, all right? So you have to re uh, respect the deadline, okay? So we also got our written test one. Uh, it's going to be open for a 24 hour period between Thursday and Friday. For those of you who haven't really looked at the uh, uh, guide for written test one, you can simply go back to uh, week number three and then there's a guide over here for written test one. If you click on that, so that talks about the uh, coverage and policies for the written test. And also there are some practice questions on the E-class, which, uh, uh, which has been released since uh, last Thursday for almost a week already. All right, so you should really uh, take a look. Okay, looking ahead, we have your lab number two to be released on the coming Friday after your lab one has been uh, due. And also your programming test number one will be happening in about more than a week, but I will give you some preparation guide and also practice test beforehand. So you just uh, just stay tuned uh, for the announcement. And it's, uh, it's never too late if you want to catch up with the uh, first year OOP kind of stuff. If you still want to do some extra practice, the tutorials is always there if you want to do it. Okay, I know uh, some of you actually came to my office hour and saying that they are helpful. So hopefully you will take advantage of that. They are there for your learning purpose. All right, so that's about for week number four, just a regular week with uh, the lecture to watch, attend a Q&A, uh, attend a schedule lab if you want to, uh, to ask your questions and also you got some assessment to be due. Just watch out for the semester calendar, stay tuned and then happy learning.